Hi everyone. Uh, in this video we're going to consider more precisely what we mean when we say the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to L. So hopefully you've seen some intuitive or informal definitions of what we mean by limit and hopefully they've sounded something like these first few lines. For example, as x approaches a, f of x approaches l. Sure. Or, as x gets really close to a, the function values f of x will be really close to l. Okay. Um, flipped around, in order to make the function values f of x really close to l, we just need to plug in only x values that are really close to a. Sure. Okay, but before we go on to these more precise definitions, I just want to take a minute to talk about what we mean when we say numbers are really close to A, uh, because that's exactly the part of this definition that's not precise. <clears throat> so remember, we're going to be considering limits in the context of a function of a single variable, and we're going to be considering that limit around some particular x value, a. Okay, so based on this graph, we should probably be able to convince ourselves that the limit of this function would be this y value here, which we can call l. Okay, so I just want to separate sort of the x and the y number lines and just think about these two numbers, a and l, for a minute. So L is a Y value, so we're going to think about it on this Y number line. And A is an X value, so we'll think about it on this X number line. Okay, so it's probably a good idea to stop and think for a minute about which numbers are really close to L on the vertical number line. Or on the horizontal number line, which numbers are really close to A. So hopefully you thought about it and realized that it's not a totally easy question to answer. Um, there's lots of possible things you could try to come up with. So I'm going to show you one very standard way of talking about numbers that are close to L uh, that hopefully makes sense. So the idea is that we're going to use these numbers, epsilon and delta, as distances. And we're going to talk about points that are close to L by talking about points that are within a given distance from L. And for L, and on the y-axis, we're going to use epsilon to measure distance. Okay, so we'll think of epsilon as some fixed length that's greater than zero, and that's going to be a direction that we're allowed to go away from L in either direction. Okay, so these numbers here, you could argue, are all close to L. More precisely, they're all within a distance of epsilon from L. If you want to be closer, just make epsilon smaller, and this interval will shrink to include values that are even closer to L. Okay. But for now, we'll say this would be the point L plus epsilon, and this would be the point L minus epsilon. <coughs> So those are the points on the number line that are close to L, but that number line is just representing the y values of our points. So in the plane, we're really talking about all the points that have y values within this region. Okay, so maybe let's go back and look at this fourth way of interpreting the definition of limit. No matter how close you want f of x to be to L, there are entire intervals of x values near A on either side, each of which has a function value f of x that is at least that close. Okay, so remember, we're using epsilon and this horizontal band to measure closeness to y. So we've essentially defined all of the points in this band to be points whose y value is close to L. 
Okay, so no matter how close you want to be, say within this band, I can find some intervals on the x-axis that produce function values that are always within this band. Okay, so to kind of see how we might figure out what that delta should be, let's look at the function values that are in that band. All right, these are exactly all of them. So if you were to plug in any x value between this left point and this right point, right, all of those x values produce function values that are at least that close to L because they're all within inside the orange band. So that argument essentially tells us that, yes, we do have entire intervals of x values that are close to A, whose function values f of x are at least as close as we want to L. Right? We could say really any of these x values here on either side of A, those form intervals. Okay, so we're going to be a little bit picky with what form we put our intervals in. Uh, just like on the y number line, we go the same distance away from L on either side, we're going to force ourselves to only consider intervals that go equally away from A on either side. So maybe we'll say this is A plus delta for this distance delta. And then on the other side, we're going to want to consider also the points from A minus delta up to A. Okay, so you might wonder why I excluded A from this interval, and that's because, as you probably remember, the limit doesn't depend on what happens at the point. That would be pretty easy to check. It depends on what happens nearby the point, as you're approaching the point. Okay, so the point is, we've found some intervals of x values Right? We could think of them as living up here in the plane. And if we plug any of these x values into the function, right, we're going to get some y values that have all been determined to be close enough to L. Right? They're all within this band. This is the band that we said at the start is the points that are close to L. And so we found an interval that produces those points. Okay, and so let's come look at this longest definition here. Remember, these are all just different ways of thinking about the same statement, the same idea. So here we really flesh out what we mean by each little part of the definition. And we write it in a very particular form. For any possible non-zero distance epsilon, which we're using to measure closeness to L, there are intervals of x values on either side of A of the form A minus delta to A and also A to A plus delta, all of which, all of these x values, when plugged into f of x, produce function values that are within a distance of epsilon from L. So the formal definition of limit is saying that no matter what epsilon you choose, you can always do the second part of this process and find some intervals that straddle A on either side, all of whose function values are that close to L. So you can imagine that you're allowed to choose epsilon to be 0 0 0.01, 0 0.0001, 10 to the minus 10. 10 to the minus 1,000, right? A number that's unimaginably smaller than any number you've ever conceived of before. But that's not a problem. As long as the number is positive, right, it's some real distance, then there's always going to be x values close to A that produce function values that are that close to L. So the, the formal definition is really a statement that says for every epsilon, no matter how close you choose to want to be, you can always get that close. Just stay sufficiently close to A. Okay, so at the bottom you can see we've sort of stripped away all of the 
um, intuition and are just left with a very precise mathematical definition. Um, but hopefully this video helps you understand what epsilon and delta represent and what these intervals mean, why they're important, and how they relate to the definition of limit.